In this video, I want to discuss Taylor series. As many of you already know, it plays a critical role in deriving the Black-Scholes equation. But it's not very clear what these terms mean. In a nutshell, it's about some status that's changing with time. For example, the expansion is saying if you know the initial status, you know how fast it's changing at. And how long it has taken, then the current status can be predicted. These extra terms exist because the velocity is not constant. Take motion as an example. If it's uniform, the position profile is linear. Take a snapshot of the status at the initial point. We get an initial status. Then the new status can be broken down into two pieces. The initial status and the change. The change is projected using the constant velocity and the duration. But what if the velocity is changing at a constant rate? So it's uniform acceleration now. The function is quadratic. The graph is curved with a changing slope, meaning that the velocity is changing. Using the initial velocity for projection, now we have an error. This error comes from the change in velocity due to the acceleration. When we use a constant velocity, we are ignoring the extra velocity due to acceleration, and that is also linear. Now, how much extra distance? This extra velocity induces. In high school, before calculus, I was taught to use the average speed because the acceleration is constant. Hence, the average is a half of that. Multiply by the duration, we have a quadratic term due to the acceleration. But if there are more layers of changes, then it's hard to think of the average velocity. Calculus provides a more general approach. This constant acceleration induces extra speed, calculated as integration over this duration. Then, this extra speed induces extra distance, calculated as another layer of integration. This general approach allows us to deal with more layers of changes. Say the acceleration is changing at a constant speed, so we use the initial acceleration here. So there is another level of change, causing the acceleration to change. Its impact can be calculated as successive integrations. It's causing linear acceleration first, then quadratic velocity and cubic distance. Of course, we can have as many levels of changes as possible, so we can't afford to have individual name for each level of change. So we will name them generally as the nth order derivative snapped at initial time. Generally, for the nth order change, its impact will go through n layers. Going through the nth layer, you will have a factor of one over n. So the impact to the top is of the nth order, with an inverse factorial. If the functions are infinitely differentiable, like sine or exponential, then all the levels of changes are constantly changing too. So we will have an infinite number of terms to account for infinite levels of changes. But as long as you choose the duration to be small enough. Then the high order terms die really fast, so only the first few terms matter, and that's the basis for deriving Black-Scholes equation. I will explore more in the future.